going to do a new song here. I don't know. You may have heard it on the radio a few times, or maybe you haven't, but we are going to play it for you. Did, uh, did the, are the ushers coming forward? This is offering time, correct? Yes, the ushers could come forward for a morning tithe and offering. Here we go. Good deal. And Ron, if you could pray for, over the offering. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Thank you for the time we can worship you and praise you. We pray now to bless us all. We bless these gifts as well as each of In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we're back. 
At least I'm back anyway. You guys have been here. I have not been here, however. And uh, we're going to be in the, in the book of Jonah today. We're going to be in Jonah, all right? And for the person who just tuned into what I'm saying, we're going to be in the book of Jonah, all right? There we go. And every once in a while we tune out. I, I get it. I've been to a good number of messages this whole year and uh, tune out every once in a while. If you tune out, that's perfectly fine. I know I've heard Grandpa say, if you fall asleep, we'll wake you up at the end of service. That's totally all right. I have had the opportunity to spiritually grow this past year and physically shrink, actually. Last time I was here, I was 30 pounds heavier, and now I'm 30 pounds less. So, um, at least, well, over 30 pounds, that's around 30 pounds, but either way, all glory goes to God, and through His help, I was able to do this. And um, it's just awesome that not only do we get to grow spiritually there, but other aspects of our life are touched on, too, and that's awesome. Uh, I usually run about five to six days a week. I, most, most of the time, it's one and a half miles or so. But I just made an agreement with the director of our school for accountability reasons. I have to run two miles a day, three days a week, all summer long. So that's going to be quite the, quite the opportunity. And when you're running in Milwaukee, because I've been running outside and I run it around noon, there are so many fun opportunities that you get when you run downtown Milwaukee. I had one guy... Every day you see something new. And I'm not kidding you. Every day there's something new. One guy, since he obviously didn't have a heart, I was running by one of the bus stops and I heard a guy yell, Hey, fat boy, you keep running. You keep doing it. And I look back and I'm like, I will. I'm going to keep doing it. And then he asked me how much I was trying to lose. And I told him and he was like, all right. And I just kept running and I didn't let it bother me. But here's the thing. Every once in a while in our life, somebody is going to come along and they're going to try and stop you from your walk with God. And Satan puts these people in our way, and no matter what happens, we need to keep running through all these things. The title of my message today is The String Ensemble. I love music, so I had to incorporate a little music in here sometime. So I want to take you through a little bit of a character analysis, a few character analyses, say that ten times fast, of some different people in the Bible. First, we're going to go with the story of Jonah. Now, when we look at the story of Jonah, we always focus on the fact that, yep, God called him to do this thing. He ran away, and then he was swallowed by a whale. Oh, my goodness. And then people debate whether it was a whale or whether it was a big fish, and they focus on the things that really don't matter. The fact is, he was swallowed by some being that was not a human, all right? And then he was spit up, and then he realized, okay, now I need to go do what God has called me to do. And then we rejoice because he did what God finally called him to do, right? We're not going to take that aspect of the story this time. We're going to take a different angle on it today. And it is clear in the story of Jonah that he did not want to go to Nineveh. As we see, we look at the fact that he was a prophet. Okay, what do prophets do? Prophets are people that are spokesmen for God. And God will give them a message to tell someone, and they will go give the message. It is their job to go give the message that God has called them to give. It says in Jonah 1-2, Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. And in the next verse, this guy says, I forgot to put this right in my message here, so I'm going to read it for you. Jonah 1.3, but Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. In verse 3, we see Jonah already fleeing from the Lord. And sometimes, has anybody ever heard of the voice of God and ran? Or heard the voice of God and didn't want to do what he called you to do? I know that, yes, thank you, Jackie. uh, Only a few people in here, right? Um, (laughs) We get the opportunity at Impact to go to the mall, and we get to witness at the mall. And it's part of our evangelism section of, of focus at our school. And so our main focus going to the mall is to witness. And as you know, when you go to the mall, there's... Islamic man over here, Buddhist man over here, atheist man over here, I don't know man over here, and then we get these Christians, which is us, who our only job that that we want to focus on going to the mall is to witness. Everybody else's focus is to get what they want to get at the mall. And so we we being the minority, uh, it's kind of difficult to talk to people, and so when God calls you to do something in a mall, it's very difficult to do that thing. And so there were a few times where I was at the mall where I was like, I really don't want to talk to that person over there that looks really upset and angry right now. And so that's that's my little example of sometimes not wanting to listen to the voice of God. But um, 
So this guy, Jonah, immediately runs, for the, uh, runs from the Lord. And as we know the story, Jonah runs away, gets aboard a ship. There's a big storm that comes. Jonah sleeps. And then he realizes that he needs to be thrown overboard to stop the storm. So the sailors throw him overboard. And what happens? Scripture says the raging sea grew calm. That's pretty awesome. Jonah goes to Nineveh and preaches, and the people respond in great repentance. Amazing, right? I mean, if Grandpa's preaching, I'm sure that he wants people to respond, because that's a really good thing when people respond to the words that God has given you. Okay, Jonah was mad that these people responded. And that's why we're taking a different angle on it today, because this says that the people responded in great repentance, but Jonah is upset. He's angry because these, he doesn't think that these people deserve the mercy that God gave them after all these things that they had been doing. So let's look at it from the beginning. Not only did he not want to go, but when he did go, he preached and he was mad that they responded. Poor attitude. Poor attitude. Like what if I came in here today and my goal was to, yeah, to preach to you because God made me, but then I, I went away hoping that you, or wishing that you guys wouldn't have responded. That's just, that's just not a good attitude. And so Jonah became angry, and in Jonah 4, 2 through 5, I believe, it says this. He prayed to the Lord, O Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, have you any right to be angry? Jonah went out and sat down in a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. So not only is he upset that they responded in a good way and upset that God gave them mercy, then he goes outside of the city, watches the city, and hope that God will destroy the city. That is, this guy is bitter and so we see this selfishness, it seems, throughout the whole entire story of Jonah. And I know for you guys who are like, oh, I love the story of Jonah. He's such a great example. No, he's not. And we can see this all throughout this story. Yeah, he may have gone and preached, but the only right thing, it did, right thing he did, it seems, is preach the message that God gave him. The rest of the story, he was selfish and prideful. I see Jonah as stubborn, arrogant, and full of pride. Yes, he was able to do the great things for the kingdom. One thing but his heart wasn't in it. God provided a fish to save Jonah. He was thrown into the sea. God provided a vine for shade for Jonah, and his heart still wasn't in it. The story of Jonah ends with him wishing he would die and him being upset at God. What a horrible way for this story to end, but the fact is that is, that is the story of Jonah, and his heart didn't seem to ever be in what he was doing. When trials came his way, when the trial of, oh, I have to preach to these people that probably are going to kill me if I talk to them. He just fled, went a different direction, and didn't do what God called him to do um, until eventually, and then, you know, like I said, he was just selfish. But there is, however, a man that did stick with God through some of the very difficult situations in his life, and his name is Job. So let's go to the book of Job. If you want to turn there, you can. Job was from the land of Ooze. Everybody say Ooze. Ooze. That's so much fun to say. There lived a man whose name was Job. This man, oopsies, um, he was a good and godly man. Some know the story of Job to be a story of a man who lost all his possessions and stuck with God through it all. Let's jump into the story starting in Job 1.1. Job 1, 1 through 3 says this, In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys, and had a large number of servants. Did you hear that? All those things that he has. 7,000 sheep. Where do you store all those? So he had to have had a lot of land, okay? Because even like 20 sheep, that'd be about enough for me. But no, he's got 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camel, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and a large number of servants. It says in the scripture, he was the greatest man among all the people of the East. Now, when we come upon people who have a lot of things or a lot of money, usually we see pride in these people. And we see, okay, they have a lot of money, they're rich, look at them, they get everything they want, so, oh, they're, they don't have a good attitude about anything. That's, they're all about themselves. But we don't see this about Job. We see something different in him. We see that he's faithful to God no matter what. And I knew 